So one of the projects I've been working on is making a digital kiln controller for my kiln. This is the kiln that I have. Um, when I bought it, it had this these electronics in here. Where basically, it just got a high and low switch, and that's it. And it needed 45 amps, which is really more than I need for the projects I'm going to be working on. So I took this uh, top section out, took the electronics off, and so it's two-thirds size now. Um, that's what it looks like now without that third section and it basically just has the heating element in there and two wires coming out to connect to my controller. So I bought this kiln controller and I didn't know anything about how to wire it up when I got it and I found a video on how to wire up a kiln controller but it was a totally bad tutorial and it didn't answer any of my questions like for instance which one of these is positive and which one's negative um, I found a website that said that the industry standard for thermocouples was that the red was negative so I wired it up that way and when I put the end of the thermocouple in my refrigerator instead of the temperature reading going down the temperature reading was going up so I said okay so I tried it the other way and I put the blue on the negative terminal and the red on the positive terminal and then it was going in the right direction also I didn't know with my power cord which one of these was positive or negative but I found out that with alternating current it doesn't matter so I hooked up my voltmeter and tried it you know, with the red uh, probe on this one and the black probe on this one and it read a positive value and then I tried it the other way and it still read a positive value so when I hooked up my power cord to my controller I just used the white as positive and the black as negative and it worked fine and what we have here is a solid state relay and um, I didn't know which end of this went to the controller, which end went to the power source, which end went to the uh, heating element so it took a little while to figure it out, but basically the side that says volts DC and with this little black circle here, it's actually a light in there. This side connects to the kiln controller. Um, the terminals on the back of here, there's a little chart that describes which one of these goes to your solid state relay. On mine it's pins 6 and 7. 6 is, um, neg uh, six is positive and 7 is negative. So I hooked those two up to the positive and negatives here. So it turns out my pin 6 on my controller went to pin 3 on the solid state relay and pin 7 on the controller went to pin 4 on the solid state relay. And then this other end here it gives a value in uh, volts AC and this side is just basically a switch. So if you've got your two uh, wires coming out of your kiln from your heating element and you've got your two uh, wires coming from your power source basically this just acts as a switch between those so one end of this can connect to your power source and the other end can connect to your uh, heating element and then the other side of your heating element just connects to the other side of your power source that's how that works so you need a, a wire to connect your two terminals from your solid state relay to your uh, PID we're gonna wire this up and then come back and show it to you working because there's some settings on here that I didn't understand. I turned it on and I was completely confused because it didn't make sense at all. So I'm going to wire it up, come back and show you it working and show you some of the settings in it that I would had to change when I turned it on for the first time. Okay. okay, so this is what it looks like wired up. You notice we're only using six out of the 14 pins and it's already plugged in so you have to be careful. These two lower left here are hot. The white is positive and the black is hooked up to the negative terminal, although I don't think it matters. Um, the upper two left, that goes to our solid state relay. Um, this is pin 6, it goes to pin 3, and pin 7 goes to pin 4. And the upper two right are thermocouple. We've got it hooked up to where the red is on pin uh, 9 and the blue is on pin 10. It's already plugged in and it's getting a signal already from my uh, thermocouple. So what you see here, the 68 is the process value. That's the actual temperature it's measuring from my room. And the bottom value is the set value. I can tell it to go 
to whatever I want it to go to. But since it's not connected to my heating element right now, it's not going to matter. It doesn't matter what I put this value at right now. But what does matter is if this set value is higher than my measured value, that little light should be on because it should be telling my uh, solid state relay to allow power from my power source to the heating element. But when I first turned this on, this is not what I saw. I saw E E E E and zero 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 zero, and that didn't make any sense. What E E E E stands for is whenever you change the settings in this, it has different settings that allow you to work in different temperature ranges, and it has a setting for Fahrenheit and Celsius, and it also has a setting for whether or not you're trying to use this kiln controller to heat something up, or if you're trying to cool something down. If you are trying to heat something up, then if your set value is higher than your um, process value, it's going to turn the solid state relay on. If you're using this kiln controller to cool something down, it means that your solid state relay is connected to some kind of cooling system. And if you put this set value higher than your measured value, it's not going to do anything because it's trying to cool stuff down and if it's already cooler than what you're setting it at, it doesn't need to do anything for you. Same thing with heating something up. If I were to set this um, set value lower than 68, it's going to blink on and off, but it's not really anything it can do because it's set internally to only heat stuff up, not to cool it down. So how you change these settings is you press set, and pass stands for password. There's a PDF document that I found that says that the password was 89. Put that in, press set. Uh, NT, that stands for in temperature. Um, that's going to be your range of temperatures you select. So press select, and these character codes here don't really mean anything. You have to reference it against the PDF document. P10.0, uh, that's the setting it came on when I got it. So here's the PDF document I'm talking about. You see down here P100. That setting in here is right next to P10. If I press that again, so there's P100. That's the setting you see here. If I go down, I should see something like E, and if I go up, I should see something like CU50. So if I press the up button, or down button, there's E. If I go up, there's my CU50. So I know if I were to press up again, I would go from CU50 to the next setting, which, no, it's not there. So if I go down to back to E, Okay, so there's E. E lets me work in the temperature range from negative 200 to 900 degrees Celsius. The next one, it can't display K, but that's what K looks like on this little display. That's for a temperature range of negative 200 to 1300 C. And then you see here, S, B, that setting, J, R, T. So that's supposed to be S, B, the weird setting, J, R, T. Okay. For the purposes that I'm going to be using this for, I want to use that weird setting because it goes from 0 to 2300 degrees Celsius. And that's the temperature range that I need because I'm not going to be using it to cool stuff down. So I know that the setting was between uh, J and B. So there's J and there's B. So that's the setting I want. Press select. You don't really need to mess with out, um, go up. You don't need to mess with that. You don't need to mess with that. You don't need to mess with that. You do need to mess with RD. RD has two values, 0 and 1. If it's set at 1, that means you're using this to cool stuff down. If it's set at 0, it means you're using this to heat stuff up. So I'm going to leave it at 0. C or F is exactly what it stands for, Celsius or Fahrenheit. 1 is Fahrenheit. 0 is Celsius. So if I select Celsius and then uh, leave this menu, the process value now coming from my thermocouple, that's the temperature Celsius in my room. If I go back, 
8, 9, set, CRF, digital 1, select, and now we're back in Fahrenheit. Okay, if I were to hold this terminal cuff in my hand, which I'm doing now, you should see the temperature go up pretty quickly. Exactly. The temperature range that I have it set to right now is 0 Celsius to 2300 Celsius. So if I press the down button in the Fahrenheit mode, guess where it's going to stop? It's not going to stop at 0, it's going to stop at 32 because that is 0 in Celsius. And I'm not even going to remove my finger. Just there, it stopped at 20 at 32. If I press the up button, it's going to stop at the Fahrenheit equivalent of 2300 degrees Celsius. For what I'm going to be using this for, I'm only going to need to go up to about 1800 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. And once um, once I get it to that temperature, it's going to stay at that temperature because that's what the PID is made for. It's made to hold it at the temperature that you select. That's really all there is to it. Um, I hope this guy, I hope this video helped you guys out, and um, I'll put a link in the description to the PDF document. Thanks for watching. Bye.